Hi, my name is RJ from Equator, and today we're going to be going over the data menu. In the data menu, this is where you'll find all the products we have at Equator. Everything from contours, point clouds, 3D surfaces, DEMs, DSMs, hill shades, printable mesh, height maps, and imagery products. First, we're going to click on the global LiDAR availability button, and this will load in all of the places where we have LiDAR, and you can see at the legend in the top left, blue means quality one, green means quality two, yellow quality three, and we have red for other LiDAR datasets. So we'll zoom into a quality two LiDAR dataset here. Next, we'll go over to the layers menu. This is where you can see all the layers we've added. We'll just turn off the quality level LiDAR coverage just so we don't get distracted. Now to declare a site, we'll click the new site button in the bottom left. We can drag the screen around, find the perfect place and click add site here at the bottom. Now we get to choose which product we want to load into the site. First we'll start with a point cloud. Find our product. We can see here it's high res LiDAR available, and we'll click the plus button. And then click generate. And in just a couple of seconds here, the points will load in and we'll have our point cloud in the map. Everything's loaded in now, so I'm going to change the angle and zoom around and take a look at our point cloud. Great location, see all the details, zoom in, looks awesome. Now what we're going to do is go into the layers menu and I'm going to toggle the visibility for the site limits just to get rid of the red line. And now we can go into the point cloud settings by clicking on point cloud in the layers. First there's classifications. Here you can toggle on and off all the different classifications for the LiDAR to get exactly the data you want. Next we have the point styles. We have a couple presets here. You can click on detailed or filled and you can see how the point cloud changes. We'll stay on detailed for this example. You can also change the height range. This will change where you see blue and where you see red that indicates the height on the points. We can edit these down to be whatever we like. So you see we're not seeing the red anymore, so we'll lower the top end of the height range. Maybe 350 would be better. And then to bring back the blue, we can bring this up to 225. Looks good. Another setting here is the intensity range. By changing the intensity range, we can change how the point cloud looks. We'll bring that back to default for this example. And you can also change the point size. This will fill in any gaps depending what you're using the data for. We'll leave it at the default around 40. Next, let's take a look at some of these point style advanced options. Here you can change the shape of the points from a circle to a square to a paraboloid and a shadow box. But we'll stay on circle for this example. You can also change the attenuation, adaptive, fixed, and constant. Next, we'll look at the symbology presets. We're currently on height, but you can also change it to classification or to intensity. We'll leave it on height for this example. And under the advanced options, there are some more settings that you can play with. The final setting is eye dome lighting. By default, it's on. If it's off, you can see that the shadows around the points are removed. We'll leave it on 
just so we can see where each point is. And that's everything for the point cloud. What we're going to do next is get rid of the point cloud in the layers menu by toggling the visibility. And then we'll go back to the data menu and we'll add another product. We'll add contours. And there are the contours. I'm just going to zoom in. What you can do with the contours is you can click on the contour lines and we can get a little bit of additional data. I'll click on this one. You'll see in the bottom left 239 meter elevation. Click on another one, 248. Let's go up to the top, 298. These contours are to a one meter resolution. Now that we have our contours loaded, we can go into the layers menu and click on contours to inspect the layer and change the style. So what we can do is change the thickness of the line or we can change the color. We have a couple presets here. Let's see what looks best. The gray shows up well on the map, we'll stick with this. Now we'll add another product. I'll start by toggling the visibility off for the contours and go back into the data menu. This time let's try a hill shade. Now we'll just have to wait a few moments for the hill shade to load in. And there it is. Looks great. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to take a layer that you've brought into Equator or downloaded into Equator and download it onto your computer. I'm going to go into the Layers menu. I'm going to toggle the visibility. You can see all the different layers stacked on top of each other. We'll start by downloading the Point Cloud. Click the little Download button beside the Toggle Visibility button here. It'll bring up a menu with some settings. We'll stay on the default settings for now. You can see in the green box it says this download will display in Equator, so we just need to click Process. Now we can see the loading bar going up for the point cloud, and now it's downloading the file. Once the file is downloaded, for Google Chrome it'll appear at the bottom. Other browsers your download may appear in other locations. Now I'm going to toggle off the point cloud and click and drag the file onto the map. This will load in the point cloud. Now, the only thing left to change is to go into the settings and change the height range to make it match what it was on the original export. We had it around 230, 360. Now that looks just like our other point cloud did. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to prepare a file for download and use outside of Equator. For this we'll use a printable mesh. Now you can see here that this download does not display an app. It will be sent to your email after we click generate. So now I've gone into my email, downloaded the file and opened up 3D Paint. Now I'm going to browse files and open up the STL in 3D Paint. To get a 3D view, I click 3D view at the top. Now we can see we've got a 3D file ready for 3D printing or other 3D activities. The final thing I want to show you is these two buttons in the bottom right. The button at the top is our user guide which will take you to our website where you can learn more about Equator. The button in the bottom will bring you to our chat. You can reach us here at any time and we'll get back to you as soon as possible, but throughout the day we'll have somebody who you can live chat with and ask your questions and get answers immediately. Thank you for watching. Enjoy Equator.